Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of the Sunday Boxing Review Show. Uh, it's part of the Get to Know Podcast YouTube channel. Make sure you guys hit the sub button, turn on the notifications and stay locked right now. We are going to be reviewing the action from last night on BT Sport and a few of the fight nights that happened around the world. Uh, so obviously the, the main talking point that we'll jump into first is the Felix Cash and the Denzel Bentley fight. Now before the fight, this was a really good trade fight and I was excited for it because I knew both guys... Uh, had the potential to beat each other now obviously a lot of people um thought that felix cash was going to win he was the slight favorite that was just due to the fact he had a larger amateur pedigree and he had spent a lot of time on team gb traveling around the world and fighting the best amateurs out there he was really explosive from the start and he is a very quick starter we saw that in the jack cullen fight and i feel that beforehand i did actually put a bet on Felix Cash to win in the first six rounds and that was purely because from watching Denzel Bentley in the first Heffron fight and just generally like how he moves and his boxing style I knew that Felix Cash was just all wrong for him now Felix Cash is just so relentless when he comes forward and Denzel Bentley even though he, he has got good boxing skills and, and footwork when you're against someone with that level of I don't know, pressure, like educated pressure, it's always going to be difficult because at certain points, um, well, a lot of the time, really, Denzel Bentley's off balance to, to the point where he's not in a position to defend properly or he's not actually in a position to get his offense off on, on Cash. And um, last night, even though we did catch Cash with a few shots, it was like never, never flush. It was never flush. And Felix Cash always had that, durability and he's been in with a better opposition probably people that hit harder as well do you know what i mean so um he's fought all the best amateurs around the world he's got that experience i didn't expect it to go in the first three rounds i thought maybe five and six was a little bit more likely i did think denzel bentley would move around a little bit better but i think because he got caught cold in that first round that just kind of knocked his confidence and he just didn't ever get going really now the commentators they were it's like they were trying to make a point for denzel bentley um in in the fight but they were really clutching at straws i mean like some of them said that they scored it even in that second round i mean what the hell were they watching to to say that kind of stuff man like it, it was a dominating performance and a real statement if i'm honest felix cash has the potential to be a world champion and i generally think he will get there it just a depends on who's at the top when he's there in that middleweight division because there's a lot of talent there do you know what i'm saying so uh it's got to be the right fight and i think he's 28 now if i'm right so he needs to kind of be fighting for a world title in the next 18 months for him to kind of be fighting and defending that world title in his peak now if he can get that european title is it matteo signani i think the guy's name is That'll be a good kind of stepping stone. He'll then have the British Commonwealth and European titles. And then he can go on and um, I'd say maybe defend it um, and get that world ranking up a little bit more. Maybe a final el um, eliminator or something like that. Now, a good fight um, would be Danny Dignam. I've looked on the rankings. I think it's for the WBO and Dignam is like number four, which I don't really understand. But yeah, he's number four in the rankings even though he drew with Sorokin last week and Felix Cash is about num probably about number eight number seven now after that victory so if he can maybe get that European title defend against Dignam then have one more fight and then jump into a world title fight that would be the ideal plan if I was managing him myself so yeah I would say Signani Dignam and then maybe a top 10 fighter and it's going to be difficult because a lot of them top 10 fighters are animals, like proper animals, like to the point where they are on his level. I have all confidence in Felix Cash. I think, like we said, he's got the amateur pedigree there. He's got the experience. He's got a good team behind him in Tony Sims and a good camp behind him who are flying right now. And that confidence is going to be, is going to be echoing around the gym. So massive bright future for felix cash look looking forward to seeing what the next steps are going to be for him and obviously eddie hearn will be very happy with that performance especially going on the away 
uh, territory and beating a BT fighter in Denzel Bentley. Another talking point of the night was the David Adelaide fight. Now, he fought Camille Sokolovsky, who is known for being quite a deceptive opponent as in he's beaten he knocked out nick webb and he's beaten a number of other prospects and kind of halted their journeys now he has a record of i think about 10 wins and 20 something losses but that is all at the highest level and when he has lost it's very rare that someone has stopped him um and very aware that someone has stopped him early i think dillian white stopped him in the third round but that was kind of when sokolovsky hadn't had as much experience and uh recently he i think he won his last fight against ellis ellis machin or ellis Mackin, or however you want to pronounce it he is a very very good fighter like he's a very good fighter and i think to go from Adelaide's last fight where he fought Dave Preston, I think it was, and that was a, Preston's debut, and it was just a complete mismatch. You can't jump from that level to that level. There needs to be a bridge in between. And even though on paper it looked like it was the, a good move in the right direction, um, surely the matchmaker should have looked at that and thought he needs another step in between them. So... If I wouldn't advise the rematch because I think it will go the same way. I mean, he needs to get maybe a couple, two or three more wins at the slight level below Sokolovsky and then go back into that sort of fight. There's no need to rush him. He's still young. He has got like the physique for a heavyweight, but last night he just seemed so stiff and um, just looking for them power shots. He wasn't using his jab at all. I heard Lyndon Arthur shouting, double jab, double jab, and he just wasn't doing it. He was throwing a jab, and then he was letting Sokolovsky jump on him. I do think if he can kind of make them improvements and, um, like I said, just get a little bit more experience first and just work on using his boxing rather than just his power shots all the time, I do think he could be a good fighter, but it's just difficult, isn't it, when someone puts in a performance like that. We had Callum Johnson returning. Another good addition to the light heavyweight scene in the UK. I mean, he came out the blocks like a bull. He was vicious, man, vicious, but just a bit reckless, you know what I mean? And maybe that's just a bit of over-eagerness to kind of impress on his BT debut, trying to stand out and make a statement to the light heavyweight scene. And I think he did do that because he just showed that he's still got that power, he's still very vicious, and he can knock anyone out. We, sh we saw that when he fought Baturbiev and he had that world-class power then, he demonstrated it. In my opinion, him versus Anthony Yard would be a brilliant fight, like I would love to see that. I think him versus Yard is actually a better fight than him versus Arthur. I think their styles would just kind of gel well and it'd be an all-out war. The light heavyweight scene in the UK is booming at the moment. We've got Joshua Boazzi, we've got Lyndon Arthur, we've got Anthony Yard, we've got Craig Richards obviously challenging for the WBA light heavyweight title against Dimitri Bivol, which I think is a little bit of a mismatch. If he can put on a good show and kind of represent himself well, maybe take it into the later rounds. Um, I do think that his stock will rise regardless and he can still always come back down to the domestic level and challenge the likes of these guys I've been mentioning. We had Emmanuel Navarrete as well getting a 12th round stoppage over Christopher Diaz over in America. That was a very good fight from the highlights that I've seen. And Diaz is tough as nails, but Navarrete is just, he's just next level now. Um, we obviously had them two wins over um, the British fighter Isaac Dogbo. They were really good fights, man. And Isaac Dogbo is a little animal as well, so it shows his level. He's now a two-weight world champion as well. I, he's got a bright future, man. He's going to have some big fights. So I look forward to seeing the next steps in, in his journey. Hopefully he can unify in the featherweight division. Next weekend we have got Sonny Edwards challenging for the flyweight title. Um, that should be a really good fight. The IBF um, champion has been undefeated since like 2008. So that will be a real challenge for Sonny Edwards. But I feel like at that weight, he has got the ability and the boxing skills to pull off a victory, especially on points. I can't really see him stopping him. He only has four stoppages out of his 15 wins, Sonny Edwards. I can't see him stopping him. It'll be a tough night, a very tough night. He could either get outclassed, similar to what Charlie Edwards did, um, in his in his step up when he when he challenged for the fly I think it was a flyweight title as well in like his ninth fight he got outclassed um, by Casemiro I think it was if I'm right um, could be a similar sort of situation there 
but um, I think Sonny Edwards is a little bit better than Charlie Edwards and um, I think he's got a little bit more more potential, a little bit more tough as well. So we'll see what happens, uh, but we'll be back next Sunday for another review show. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want to support the channel, go hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications and stay tuned for all the podcasts we've got out. We've got the first episode of the Get to Know podcast with uh, Boy Jones Jr. That comes out on the 4th of May and we'll have episodes every Tuesday from then on. So stay locked right now. Hope you all have a good week. I'll see you next weekend. Peace out. Let's go.